Well, good evening. It's Wednesday and time for another Wednesday's Word, and we're glad that you tuned in and uh, pray that uh, today's Word to you will meet you right where you are and whatever your walk is, whatever you're going through, that it'll be an encouragement to you. So uh, we're continuing on our study on keeping your eyes on the prize as we look through Philippians chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles, uh, open up. We'll be starting uh, at about verse 12 as we continue on. So let's have a word of prayer and ask God to speak to us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray today as we open your word and study it, Lord, that you'll speak to us. God, your word's alive. It's life-changing. So, Father, I just pray that for each of us, Lord, that hear your word right now, that you'll use it and penetrate our hearts, Lord, minister to her, encourage us, correct us, Lord, whatever is necessary, Lord God, for of what we need, Lord, from your word today, that you would just minister in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Philippians 3, verse 12. Remember, we're looking at all of these analogies of a runner, uh, the regular physical runner compared to the Christian runner. And so the uh, point that we're on now that we started on uh, last time we met on Wednesday was that uh, runners know that they must always be developing uh, with zeal to win. Uh, they've got to have that desire to, you know, always be improving is what it means and to, to have that zeal and passion to win. And that's necessary also for the Christian runner. That we have to have that same mentality. And so we look at verse 12 where Paul begins to say, he says, not that I've already obtained it or have already become perfect. That word perfect in, in that Greek word has to do with mature or having full maturity. Uh, and so Paul's saying, hey, I haven't arrived yet. I may have grown and I may have matured some, some, but I'm not satisfied with that. I've got to keep developing. I've got to keep growing. I've got to keep maturing because I haven't, I haven't reached perfection. And that's what runners do too. You, don't, you never see a runner say, I'm fast enough. <laughs> what is fast enough? Because you don't know if the guy behind you is going to pass you. And again, we're not in this race to compete with each other. Uh, in the Christian race, but for the regular runner, they have to always be getting faster and better and stronger and have that passion, continued passion to win. And we do as well. And, and Paul says, hey, I, ha I haven't obtained it yet. I haven't reached that mark yet. And neither have we. But sometimes the devil will uh, convict us of that, you know, or try to twist our mind to that about, hey, you're okay. Uh, you, you've, you've come a long way. Just be satisfied with that. Uh, we need to be content in life, but not in content with where we are spiritually. We've got to keep growing and pressing. Don't, don't be where you were last year, and, and don't be where you were last month. Try to always be pressing on for the Lord, because then Paul goes on uh, the rest of that verse, but I press, I press on so that I may lay hold of that which I also, I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Paul's saying, I'm pressing on. I'm pulling my energy and effort. I'm giving it my all. It's kind of what you tell your children. You know, give it your best. Give it your all. You know, of course, it's not our strength, but the Lord. But we've got to have that determination to give it our all. Um, to give it everything we have. To give it our best. Uh, I've told people, you know, that's in ministry, you know, the Lord deserves our best. If you give your best at home and give your best at work, but you don't give your best to the Lord, then, you know, we're robbing the Lord of something he gave us to, to use for him, whether it's our service or our, whether it's our walk or whether it's our maturity, we keep pressing on uh, because he said that which was laid hold on, he wanted to be more like Christ. Uh, that's one of the goals that that we uh, press forward to, to be is to be more like Christ each and every day in each and every way. Think of all the things that when he says that he presses on, that he's, he's given it his all. Think of all the things in the scripture about giving it your all. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 4.29, it, it talks about searching for him, searching for God, how? With all your heart and with all your soul. 
It also says in Deuteronomy 6, 5 about loving the Lord. How should we love the Lord? It says, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Uh, in Deuteronomy 10, 12, it talks about serving the Lord. And how does it say to serving? Serve the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. Uh, when it talks about in Deuteronomy 26, 16, about uh, doing the commandments of God, it says, you shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and all your soul. And it talks about in Deuteronomy 32 about obedience. How should we obey him? It says here, obey him with all your heart and all your soul. In Jer Jeremiah 29, it talks about finding the Lord. It says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Uh, how should you return to the Lord if you've drifted? Well, Joel 2.12 tells us that. Return to me with all your heart. I mean, you can see so many illustrations that we give it our all. That's what the, the it's demanding. You know, you've heard of the so saying all or nothing. We should have that mentality, not the nothing, but the all. Uh, that's how we should approach it. You know, you see people doing that in sports. And, you know, they're just, you know, that's why there are a lot of role models. They say, man, that guy just, or that lady just gives it their all. And But that should be our mindset. Uh, we should be the ones who are giving it their all. Their, their prize they're going to get is much less than the prize that's set before us to you know, be Christ-like and the reward that's set before us. So we, we, we do that and, and we have that, that drive within us uh, that the Lord, I believe, he, he gives us the strength to do it anyway. And so those are the things that we need to focus on. And then and, and, and when we look at the runners, uh, runners are not focused. That's another point. Runners are not focused on all the distractions around them, but they're focused on the prize. You know, you don't see runners distracted. They're not looking up in the stands, waving at Aunt Mary and, and looking over and seeing what if the hot dogs are ready at the concession stand. Um, they're not looking around to see who's practicing. They are focused on the race, on the prize. And we have to be that as well. In verse 13, it says, Brethren, I do not regard myself of laying hold of it yet. I hadn't arrived. But one thing I do. Wow. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, is just about to make a statement that says, but one thing I do. Well, that's focus there. Well, what is it, Paul? What is that one thing you do? Well, he says, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. His focus was forward, not backward. He wasn't looking at what all had went on behind him and in the past, his focus was the future. What runner could run a good race if he was always looking behind him? Runners have lost races like that. If they to look to the right or to the left or especially behind them, it messes up. I've often said, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're focused too much on your past, it'll mess up your future and your present. Uh, you know, my dad, we used to have a tractor and we had a garden. Um, and I used, you know, used to try to plow the garden and uh, I'd always be looking back to see how it looked and the rows got crooked when we were doing that. And he said, well, you can't look back at what you're doing. You got to look at a post or a fence post or a tree and keep your eyes straight on it and not look behind. Cause we're going to see what we've done or what we had done. Uh, but we can't look at either past accomplishments, especially not past failures. I believe that's really what Paul was focused in on his past when he persecuted Christians and did all of that against the church. And, uh, he had to put that behind him. It was his past. And so he put the past, he knew he had to put the past behind him to focus on that one thing. I'm putting the past behind. I'm not focused on that, but I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead. Um, you know, just think of all the one things in the scripture. You know, Jesus um, told that rich young ruler, one thing you lack. Hmm. Uh, Jesus told Martha, but one thing is necessary. 
the psalmist had one request. He said, one thing I ask from the Lord that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and meditate in his temple. <laughs> That's the one thing he asked for. All those one things are important. They show that focus, that determination that, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, there, there, may not, there may be four or five things in my life or 10 things, but one thing I'm gonna do, the one thing I'm gonna focus on and that's how you have to be as a runner, and that has to how you have to be as a Christian runner as well. You know, D.L. Moody was involved in a lot of activities, Sunday school, YMCA, evangelism meetings. But in 1871, when you know it well through your history, the Chicago fire hit and burned down almost all of Chicago and damaged buildings so much, lives were lost. After that event, he only focused on evangelism. He knew how many people had lost their lives that maybe never heard the gospel. One thing he had to do, he was doing many things which were all good, but he had to refocus on what was the most important thing. And we do that as well. You know, we have to do that. You know, I've made this illustration before, you know, about your windshield. You know, you've got a real big windshield for looking forward, but you've got real tiny things for looking back, the rear view mirror and two side mirrors. Now, they're not very large compared to your big windshield. And that's how it is in our life. We look back occasionally. I mean, we give the Lord praise for what he's done. We look back and give somebody a testimony of what God did in our past. But that's the brief things. That's the rearview mirror, little tiny one. That's the tiny uh, mirrors on the side of our car. Those, All those are just small, but the big windshield is for the what we mainly focus on in life because don't focus on past failures. Don't focus on past team accomplishments. Focus on what we have now, what the prize is ahead of us, and what lies ahead that we've got to do that. Matter of fact, that word he uses, reaching forward in verse 13, it's a word in the Greek that has to do with stretching a muscle to its limit. I mean, and that's what those runners do. They're, they're in pain. Their, their muscles are way beyond stretch than you could tolerate. But how do they do it? How, how do they... It, how they go through that pain and endure it well because of the prize that's what it is that muscle can stretch to the limit because they're reaching forward they're stretching out for the prize led before them a prize of a trophy a tri prize of a maybe a, a monetary amount but our prize is much better to, to be Christ-like and also the reward that lies before us because he, he goes on to say that in verse 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's how he could stretch that muscle to the limit because he had his eyes on that goal, that prize, that pressing forward. You know, there's a man that once died as he climbed one of the Swiss Alps there and and he died uh, during that climb and, and he was buried at the bottom of that mountain and the epitaph read this, he died climbing. <laughs> he died climbing. He died pressing on. He died doing what he needed to do to get up that mountain. He may have not made it, but he died climbing. And that should be our epitaph. Hey, you know, I think it was, uh, it was Bishop Cumberland that said, it's better to wear out than to rust out. You know, that we press on. You know, we may fall. We may not reach every goal that's set, but we're pressing on. We're giving it our all that we're not going to rust out. At least we're pressing on with everything that we have to give it our all. We're used to that. You know, in sports, we wanted the trophy, uh, and you pressed on to get it. At work, you pressed on because of the paycheck. You pressed on because of the promotion. You pressed on because of the bonus. In school, you pressed on because of the good grade. You pressed on because you wanted to go to college. You pressed on because you wanted to finish college to get that uh, uh, that job. Well, whatever it is, we press on in a lot of things. Why? Because we keep our eyes on the prize. And that's what we have to do in Christ. Uh, when we give up, we've got to keep looking forward and keeping our eyes focused on, on what lies ahead. Why? Because there's going to be a Bema seat one time where we're going to get rewards or lack of rewards. And also in this life, there's rewards and lack of rewards. And even 
just becoming more like Christ and becoming close to him, all those are, are great rewards to, to look at. Matter of fact, we read it once before, but I want to read it one more time. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. <laughs> well, that's basically wrapping up what we say. You know, those prizes they win, they'll eventually rust or go away, but not our prize. But we run to win, just like a runner runs to win. We want to get that prize. We focus on what lies ahead. Uh, Hebrews 11.6, I love it. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he who comes to God must, and here we go, believe that he is, that's first, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. God's a rewarder. He says it about if you're going to come to him, you got to believe that he is, and you have to believe something else, that he's a rewarder of those that seek him. Keep your eyes on the prize. It's what lies before us. It's what motivates us. Now, our motivation is the love of God and, and for what Christ did for us. But our motivation also is like, hey, there's also a prize before us. There's that, I believe, the, what we receive here in this life and also the life to come that's worth pressing on. Paul thought it was worth it. We should think it's worth it. Whatever you're going through, keep pressing on. Give it your all. God will give you the strength, and you'll be glad that you did. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for all you gave us, Lord. You gave us your all on the cross because you loved us that much to pay our price, to pay the price for our sin. And Lord, as we run this race, Lord, we pray for strength. I know that those in the sound of my voice that are running on low, running on empty, wondering maybe where you are. But Lord, I pray that you'd continue to strengthen them, encourage them to keep on keeping on with their eyes on the prize. Keep on pressing on, Lord, as you strengthen them. God, may they see even the reward of their diligently pressing on for you, that they'll see uh, you around them and you meeting that need and you reaching out. So, Father, I pray that you just continue to guide and direct us in all these matters, Lord, and may you always get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that you, you received a blessing from where you are in your walk in life. And as we encourage each other in our walk, not only does the Lord encourage us, the Spirit encourages us, uh, praise God, we have a church to encourage one another through this walk. Because sometimes we trip in the race, sometimes we fall. But hey, we've got not only all the Lord and his spirit, and we also have his church and fellow believers to help us. So praise God for that. Just a few announcements. Uh, today, uh, as you know, is the day that uh, the governor has relaxed the uh, mass mandate. But we, as a church, we always want to be sensitive in this area. You know, there's always so much room for an offense. Uh, for those that continue and want to continue to wear a mask, be sensitive to them uh, that that's their choice to do that. For those that don't wear a mask, we also are uh, sensitive to them that that's their choice as well. So, you know, it's always motivated. We're always motivated by love. And that's how the whole world knows that we're his disciple is the way we love one another. So let's continue as we have been to to be tolerant, whichever choice uh, people make in that regard. Uh, also, too, uh, our Easter invite cards are in, and so we'll have those available this Sunday uh, for you to pick up and get a bunch and give to those you know and those you run into uh, to invite them to church on Easter. Again, we're having two services, 9 o'clock and 1045, and so be ready to pick up those invite cards this Sunday, and uh, you can make an impact on somebody's life uh, either that's not ever been in the Christian race or, or maybe has drifted away and you can encourage them to get back. And what a great time to get back on Easter. So grab some of those cards on Sunday. Also, don't forget about the time change this Saturday. 
Uh, remember, spring forward. I know this is the one you're going to lose an hour of sleep on, but hey, you got to do it. So before you go to bed, uh, spring forward those clocks so you'll be ready for Sunday morning. Uh, we look forward to either seeing you online or seeing you at church. We're having people come back more and more, and we praise the Lord as we see that. And so we praise the Lord for you. I love you. I thank God for you. You're a blessing to me. Pray for you. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.